If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Philippians, the fourth chapter. We're right at the end of the book of Philippians. In a quick review of what we've been studying, we've studied how that Paul in his ministry had went to Europe for the first time, how that the church of Philippi was the first church ever in the uh, continent of Europe, how that the gospel was spread there, and how that a work began there that was probably the most supportive work for Apostle Paul's ministry that he knew. Whenever he was in need, especially in Thessalonia, uh, the churches that should have been helping him, they didn't. And uh, But the church of Philippi did. They always ministered to him, and then they lost contact with him. But in studying the book of, of Philippians, it's important that we understand the grace of God and how, how it had come down and how that a church had been born and how that people had found the mercies of God and the living church of Jesus Christ was sprung up there in Europe. And how that they fell in love with Apostle Paul. Why? Because of his faithfulness to the gospel. It was probably one of the most mistreating and abusive places that Apostle Paul ever went in his ministry. But this church saw to it that he was ministered to. They had a love for him. They sent to him. They cared for him whenever he was in Thessalonia. And uh, he needed help so bad. They were there. There. And, and I think there's a lesson in that itself, and I don't want to be too hurried as we finish up this book this evening, but I think it's important that we understand that sometimes God can give us a burden and show us what somebody needs. And it won't be Brother Paul because he's already in heaven or he's already in the presence of God. But this evening it's important for us to understand that there's others out here ministering for God and, and there's other people right here in our community. There's people in our families that needs what you can give them. Uh, I think in studying the book of Philippians we understand how important it was for individuals to have the joy of Jesus Christ in their heart. And because of the joy that was in their heart, it caused them to serve the Lord even when things weren't going too good. Apostle Paul taught us a lot in his uh, revelations here in the book of Philippi, uh, Philippians when he shared with us many times of his suffering and, and shared with us sometimes about his bondage and about how that he had needs but how that he had found the grace of God all sufficient and whether, whether he needed or he didn't need it, he learned to be content in the Lord. Whatever state he was in, he learned that the most wonderful thing was to have rejoicing in his heart in the Lord. And he's sharing with us, and I think that's, that's the one thing that throughout my years in the church, I've, I've evangelized. I used to go all over the country preaching and singing and holding revivals, and, and God was always there, and I, I worked hard during that time. And sometimes there was no time for resting, but God was always faithful. But uh, I remember how I enjoyed it. And when the, when the battle would get really tough, there were some times that I would preach every night for over a month. But we seen souls saved. And we seen the churches lifted up. And, and I thought about even when you're laboring the hardest, and even when things are not going the best for you, Apostle Paul here in the book of Philippians shared the message with us that the most powerful thing we have in serving God is our joy. David, the man of God that fought the battles for God, that led the armies of God, whenever he had sinned and he had lost his joy, that's what he prayed when he come back to God was, Lord, restore the joy of my salvation. 
You see, we thank God for grace. We thank God for salvation that comes through and by grace, by our faith in God. We thank God for the born-again experience that we experience with the Lord when Jesus comes in and changes who we are and gives us a love that we look to Him in a different way. And we don't run from Him. We love Him. We want to be with Him. And that's, that's what I've always said through, through the years. That's the biggest guide for me as a, parent, uh, as a pastor, how much people love the Lord by how much they want to be around His family. How much they want to praise Him. How much they want to serve Him. And how much joy they have in their heart. You know, I've seen some people that uh, along the way in my service for the Lord that they stayed so sad that they were really a bad testimony for the Lord. And I understand that times get tough. And I've shared with you several times about some of these that I've ministered to and had the privilege of meeting that suffered so tremendously. They, they had a burden on them of hurt and affliction that I've not ever had to bear like they did. But they were happy in the Lord. I've seen many of them. I've held a lot of their hands when they were saying goodbye to this world and going to be with the Lord. And they died with joy in their heart. I remember my grandfather whenever I was standing there with him. And his little legs had turned uh, black all the way up to his knees. His hands had turned black all the way up to his elbows. And he got so weak that he couldn't even get his lips together. But he was trying to say hallelujah. He said hallelujah to his last whisper went out of him. And whenever he got to where he didn't even have the strength, Sister Teresa, to even get his lips together, he was still trying to praise God. And that's what Apostle Paul wanted us to understand out of this teaching. God inspired him. He sent this letter to Philippi because he really wanted to be with them. And they were a joy to him. And he was somebody they loved. And he rejoiced just thinking about them. And uh, sometimes I rejoice when I'm alone just thinking about the church here. Some of you all, I love you so much. And uh, you've been a strength to me in pastoring this church. I thank God for your faithfulness. You know, I wish we had faithfulness out of everybody that comes here and calls this their church. But you don't have. And I know and I've learned that through the years that, that uh, you want people to be stronger than they are. You want people to be more faithful than they will be. Because they just don't have the affection towards God that they should have. So we just keep praying for them. And we just keep coming and being faithful. But Apostle Paul wanted them to know that whether he was having a good time or a bad time, it was the joy that he felt in the relationship that they had with God together. That's what kept him going. And he said that he wanted to go and be with them, but he was sending Timothy with him and Aphroditus, their pastor that they had sent to minister to him while he was there in the Roman prison. He sent him back because his love for them was greater than his needs was for Aphroditus. He came there to help Paul because Paul really needed his help. I don't know what his suffering needs were, but Aphroditus brought the needs to him. And the church sent a lot of love, and I don't know what they done. But Apostle Paul sent them back to the church because he loved the church more than he loved himself. And that's, that's the beauty of a pure relationship with God. That's what the Lord wants out of all of us. He wants us to love the church more than we love anything. And that's what I keep preaching and keep teaching and trying to tell the church. It'll show in your testimony. It'll show in your witness. It'll show in your faithfulness. If you really love the Lord more than anything, you're going to want to be with Him. 
And he said to forsake not the assembling of yourselves together uh, as the manner of some are and so much more as we see the day approaching. The coming of the Lord is coming. The day of the Lord. We see the signs. We hear everything. We, we hear what's going on in the world. We see the wickedness that's growing. I was talking to a man down here today on this new Dollar General that they've got down here. He's kind of over the job. And he was talking about his little girl. And he was talking about how that through her love for the Lord, how it had affected him as her dad just watching her how much she loves the Lord and and uh, I thought man that's what it's all about that's what Apostle Paul is trying to teach us our love for the Lord is going to show our joy that Apostle Paul said you've got to have you've got to rejoice it's going to show and uh, I've, I've always thought that it ought to be more than a mundane duty to where we just get by and we call ourselves a Christian and it's a burden to go to church or it's a burden to do this and if the Lord puts something on your heart it's hard for you to do it I, I, I don't want that kind of relationship with God I want the relationship with God that he can bless me I want the relationship with God sister Normie that I enjoy talking to him and I know the greatest privilege, I've said it so many times in here at church, is the privilege of prayer. We, we can talk to the Lord. You know, we can come boldly to the throne of grace and talk to the Lord and there's power there. And I think that's what's missing in a lot of people's relationship with the Lord. They don't pray enough. And I know we could all say we can pray more. But it's in your life of prayer that you talk and commune and you get closer to God. And that's the power that you need to overcome in your daily activities, your daily life. It's the power that you gain from the communion that you have with the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to read with me. We, we come down to the place here in the fourth chapter where he was talking about how that they had found another opportunity to help him. And he said he was so thankful for it. But he was telling them how that he rejoiced in the 10th verse. We were closing the scripture out there in about the, uh, I think about the 12th verse last week. But I want to back up here because this is the thing. He said, after I've surveyed all of the virtues of God, all of the things that are pure, all the things that are honest, right above there in the 8th verse. He comes down here in the 10th verse and he says, I rejoiced in the Lord greatly. His joy was great. That now at the last your care of me hath flourished again. He said, you just overwhelm me with, with your love and your care. And uh, you know, I think that's the most wonderful thing that my wife and I have is her care for me. She don't have to do a lot of the things that she does. And that's the same way I feel about the Lord. He don't have to bless me and do for me the way he does, Brother Neil. But it's so wonderful. Yes. That's the joy and the love that the Lord wants us to have. That's what he wants in your home. That's what he wants in your life is for you to rejoice in loving, rejoice in being a Christian, be happy in the Lord and do things for those that you can help. That's what real love is. It says here, I rejoice that your care for me hath flourished again, wherein you were also careful. In other words, you always was watching over me. You always wanting to know what my need were he said I, I rejoice in that but he said but she lacked opportunity in other words there was about two years there that we told you when we first started teaching this where he had left them and he went back to Jerusalem and they condemned him they found him guilty and they sent him to Rome to be judged he appealed to Rome because he was a Roman but as they sent him to Rome, he lost contact with the church in Philippi. 
but he said you lacked opportunity to, to, to minister to me. But he said, now that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. How many of you are happy with just whatever God has for you? Do you understand that God is God in every need you have? And sometimes, you know, we find ourselves on the short end of the stick and we wish we had something and we just put our trust in the Lord and if, if it's necessary, God will provide it. I've seen him do it many times. Now, there's some things that people want that it's not good for them to have. There's some things that people want that really it's not the way God wants it. So we got to learn to be content with however God takes it. But he says here in the 13th in the 12th verse, he says, I know both how to be abased or be down. I know how to go through the hard times. And I know how to abound. I know how to, to be lifted up. I know to how to how to have the good times when God blesses me. But he said, everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry. In other words, he's saying, God has taught me that however it is, whether I'm full or whether I'm hungry, both to abound or to suffer need, he said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. That ought to be everybody's testimony. How many of you feel that way? I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. That's what Apostle Paul wanted to share with the church. He said, notwithstanding, ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. He said, in all of this, I know that you tried to communicate when I was hurting the most. He said, now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church, none of his brothers and sisters in Christ communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving except you or but ye only he said you're the only one that went beyond and made sure that my needs in the Lord was supplied it says here in the 16th verse for even in Thessalonia ye sent once and again unto my necessity <coughs> he said there were many times that you were there for me but he says not because I desire a gift he said I'm not talking to you and I'm not telling you these things because I want you to give me more or that I'm wanting something from you he said I desire fruit that ye may abound in your account or to your account and what he's saying, it's good for you to minister. It's good for you to give. It's good for you to love. Sister Dottie, there's not a better feeling in the world than to be able to help somebody that really needs it. You get your reward right there. The God repays you. How many of you have ever helped somebody and know that it's something they really needed and God used you to get it for them? Isn't that a wonderful feeling? That's, that's the payday right there. He's saying, but I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Aphroditus, that was their pastor, the things which were sent from you and an odor of sweet smell. In other words, it was so pleasing in the eyes of God. And the sacrifice was acceptable and well-pleasing to God. He was saying, you have been just exactly what God knowed I needed. And you've done it because you wanted to do it out of your love for me. 
And that's, that's a very special place to be. There have been t times, I, I remember times along the way, I used to take my boys, and I used to take a lot of the young men out of the church, and uh, I would take a pickup load sometimes, and sometimes maybe not that much, because they maybe didn't have it, but I would take stuff to families that I knew. You know, back then I knew the community better than I know it now. Work has kind of taken me away from a lot of the community, and the community has grown up on me. The children have all grown up, and the people that I always knew, and the families that I knew, it's changed some. But, but I remember when I used to take a lot of the young boys, and we'd go to a family and take them food that they didn't have. And I would always have the boys to bow their heads and we'd pray with the family while we were there. And we would show them what a blessing it was to give to somebody that really had a need. I remember many times when there was little children there that they, they just didn't have food to eat. I remember times whenever uh, there were special illnesses in the families that uh, you'd find out about when you went and you could help them with it. And it's a wonderful thing to give. The Bible says it's more blessed to give than receive. He also says, cast your bread upon the waters and you'll receive the benefits and the, the blessings from God on them many days yonder. Some some 50-fold, some, some 90-fold, some 100-fold. He talked about the blessing. If you just give them to the Lord, do something for God, that God will return the blessing to you many times over. Have you found him to be that way? That's what Apostle Paul was trying to tell the church here. He said in this next verse, he said, My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory. By Christ Jesus. I have found him to be so. I, I thought about, uh, I wrote down a, a little thing here. I, I was kind of uh, studying to find out how God wanted me to finish this book. And I thought, you know, in everything that Apostle Paul put on the table for us to eat in this book, it was a few things that we need to glean from what he's trying to tell us. First of all, that it was the grace of God that makes it all possible. And in whatever condition the church was in when it was early and just born, or Apostle Paul in all of his afflictions and suffering, it was important that he had the joy that God, only God could give. And he rejoiced in whatever state it was, and the church rejoiced with him, and they loved each other back and forth. And when Paul needed and they knew where he was at, they went beyond their self to give to Apostle Paul. I, I wrote these things down because I think it's important for us to understand. As we finish up this book, we've got to understand that it was all about the grace of God. And at the end of this thing, Apostle Paul wanted to go see them, but he never did get to. But the grace of God was there when he said, I have fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. I've finished my course. And he sent the message out to the whole world, to all the churches, through Brother Timothy that he left behind a pastor, that henceforth the Lord is going to give me a crown of righteousness and he's going to give it to me himself. He didn't die a sad man. He didn't lay his head down on the block after suffering for all of this time over there, being chained to these guards and being afflicted like he was. He never died an unhappy person. He died full of joy. And that's what he wanted the church to know. He wanted them to know whether he got back to see them or whether it went a different way. He said he was hoping that he'd get turned loose and get to come back, but he didn't. And about two years after that, he 
fell victim to Caesar's emperor. You see, after Caesar, Julius Caesar, after he ruled there in Rome as king, every emperor from that time forward was called Caesar. And Apostle Paul wanted them to know, as we read down here, as we finish up, he's wanting them to understand down in the 22nd verse that all of the saints that are there in Rome with him, they salute you. And he said, chiefly, they that are of Caesar's household. I'm talking about the emperor of Rome and the ones that he controlled and the ones that controlled Paul. He led many of them to Christ. What a blessing. What a blessing in a bad situation when you could just kind of hang your lip down and say, woe is me and what a tough way to end my life. He didn't do that. He said, we salute you. We're sending out a salutation to you from Rome, from all of my brothers and sisters that are here waiting for Nero or what they would call Caesar's man. To take the head off of my shoulders, I want you to know that we salute you and we're happy and we want you to be happy. What a way to leave here, Brother Roger. What a way to leave. What a way to live your life for Christ. Don't live your life for Christ uh, in defeat. You know, we get some people that get so discouraged in the church. And you know, I've always tried to lead them beyond that because it's easy to get discouraged. It's easy to get your feelings hurt. It's easy for something bad in the church to happen and you say, well, that's just not right and I'm just kind of disappointed about it. And you go to pouting and you, if you're not careful, they'll, it'll break fellowship in the church and the church will suffer and you'll suffer. Well, that's what Apostle Paul is trying to tell us in the end of his message to the Philippian church. Regardless of all the hurt I've been through and how you've been there with me and how we've loved each other and how we've rejoiced. But in the state that I'm in, he said, I want you to understand that even facing death, I want you to know that I'm happy. And I want you to know that the saints are happy. And I want you to know that the new converts are happy. And they all say hello to you and just keep doing the work of the Lord. As your pastor, I'd like to tell you that it's important you stay happy. It's important you rejoice in the Lord. You've got, I wrote this down, that you've got to have the joy that Apostle Paul taught us about. Whatever your state is, whatever you're going through, you've got to be happy. That's your source of power. If you want to be effective for the Lord in your church and in your life, you've got to be happy. And to find that joy, you've got to have communion with the Lord. You've got to pray. You've got to talk to the Lord. You've got to have private conversations with God. You've got to find those times. I know we all work and we all keep our minds so full of things trying to get through life. But you've got to have that time when you can kind of pull off to the side and say, Lord, this is our time. It may be during the night when your wife's asleep or your husband's asleep. It may be during the day when you just find a little time that you can just talk to the Lord. I think Apostle Paul was wanting the church to understand it's so important to pray. It's so important to find the rejoicing that you find when you commune with the, God, with the Lord. It's a wonderful thing. There's nothing in this world... And I know you know it. I'm not telling you something. But there's nothing in the world more wonderful than to feel the blessings of God upon you. The peace that passeth all understanding. When the world is in a rage, your life is in a mess, things are going dead wrong. Bless your heart, you can just look up and say, thank you, Jesus, because your grace is here for me. I'm going to get through this. Bless the Lord. I have a son-in-law that he, his famous words, I guess it was words that was used here in the world. But 
he'd always tell us, he'd say, I got this. I'm talking about Abe. He'd always tell you, I got this. That was just a slang way of stating that he was in control of the situation. Well, I think that's what Brother Paul was trying to tell us as Christians. It don't make no difference how life's going for you, whether it's going good, whether you're abounding, or whether you're abased in a valley. It's good to have the joy of the Lord, and it's good to have the communion of the Lord that's going to be your strength when you need it. Amen? He loves you so much. Children, this thing's about to wind up. Get as close to the Lord as you can. Enjoy your salvation. Be a witness to somebody that needs you. And remember that no matter how it's a going, whether it suits you or it don't suit you, whether things are going the right way or the wrong way, be happy in the Lord. And don't let it interfere with you talking to God. That's where you're going to find your power. There is a place that we can come to with the Lord. And that's where I like to stay. And I'm not saying I always am there. But there is a place that we can come to, to where it's kind of like a bubble, or it's kind of like a sanctuary, kind of like a shield. But this is where me and the Lord, we find it, and we commune, and I find my joy restored, and I find the power of prayer that only God can give me to where I can walk on in faith and know that whatever comes, Whatever comes, Sister Teresa, I'm going to be all right. How about you? Do you know what I'm talking about? He prayed his very last prayer for you. He said, Lord, keep them. Let them be one. Let them have this special relationship. And you see, I want to know more about the Lord. Well, just get alone with him. How do you learn about your children and how do they know you? It's when you spend time together. I've always said the way, you, way a child spells love is T-I-M-E. And I think if you're going to find the joy and the love and the deep fellowship and the communion and the power of God to overcome, you're going to find it by spending time with the Lord. I'd like to ask you to stand. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your grace. We thank you, Lord, because we can talk to you. Lord, for the privilege of prayer. God, for the mercy seat that's there for us to come to. And Lord, we're thankful for the communion that we have with you. Lord, and we're so thankful for the joy that we have the rejoicing in our heart just because we're your child. Lord, no matter what our state is or how hard or how high the mountain we're climbing or how low the valley we're going through, Heavenly Father, we're thankful that we can have joy. In Jesus' name, we praise you. Church, say amen. God bless you.